the course of this next two weeks. As we look to the message, the war of 2024, and I have no inside track. I don't think anybody does anymore on, on what's, what could be, what's coming up. I think the world appears to be uh, in, in what uh, the world might say or consider a state of free fall. It's a very, very interesting dynamic that's happening globally. For the believer, it's the exact opposite. Everybody, please remember this. Nothing, according to the Bible, and nothing for the believer is falling apart. You need to know this. If something is falling apart in your life as a believer, it's because you haven't applied God's word to it. Okay? But everything is falling together according to God's will in this world. The world sees itself falling apart. The world is getting desperate. The world is panicking. The world is seeing no way out. By the way, Jesus said there'd be this very time that would visit or commence in the world scene or on the world scene. But as things look to be falling apart for the believer, and I want to make this very clear, that for the believer things are coming together because they're coming together as the Bible says. I was quoted recently in some publication. I'm not going to give you the, the, the name of them just because I don't want uh, them to uh, have any acknowledgement, but um, they made a comment about how me and a few others um, are, are excited about the war in Israel, that we're happy about that, that we're happy about Russia attacking Ukraine and Russia threatening Europe right now, and they had a whole story about this, and uh, I read that for a few moments, and then I frankly, I just, I just clicked off of it. Because it took me a few moments to to see right then and there, this is a bunch of baloney. What they don't understand is none of us revel in evil, death, mayhem, or war. But here's what people cannot tolerate. Is that if you have an answer to what's going on and they don't, that's unacceptable to them. If you say to them... We need to get ready. We need to pray. We need to have faith in Jesus. And we need to be looking up. That convicts them. Are you hearing me? It convicts them. And they don't want to hear from you. And so the only way that they can cope with you is by labeling you. And so uh, I and a few others are warmongers. Uh, My friend Tony Perkins was thrown into that group. Secretary Mike Pompeo was thrown into that group. We're warmongers. Why? Oh, because you see everything through the lens of Scripture. Guilty as charged. (laughs) Hallelujah. May that always be the case. You don't see things through the lens of the Scriptures, my friends, and you're going to be bouncing off the walls all the way to the end of days, and that's not God's will for your life. No, the truth of the matter is there's going to be the war of 2024. And I'm not talking about bombs, guns, and missiles. I'm talking about an all-out war on everything from the spiritual realm, which is invisible, but certainly to the physical world in which things manifest. So um, throughout this next few weeks, I'm going to be making references to notable moments, perhaps, I would say, uh, in warfare or in war history or what is called the art of war. In fact, um, some of you may want to get this book if you want. I mean, check it out. I think it's awesome. But um, uh, the first quote is this, and I I want you to see this regarding what we as the believer should take away. Now, before I, listen, before I give you all of this stuff, I want you guys to know as Christians, listen, I would like to say, if you want to be involved in ministry, read this non-Christian book. (laughs) Say, how dare you endorse a non-Christian book? Listen, this is a brilliant, brilliant work, and it's by Patrick Van Horn and a couple of other guys. It's, the title of the book is Left of Bang, the Marine Corps' Combat Hunter Program. You need to read the book if you're a Christian. This year. This year. Why? Look what he says. This is a quote. Learning is impossible without humility. We encourage confidence, not cockiness. This is what he says, instructing and schooling Marines who are going to be deployed to the world to find and to hunt down, 
terrorist activity or enemy activity before it happens. That's why it's called left of bang. Are you tracking with me? Left of bang means you find the enemy and you detect the enemy by how they're acting, what they're saying, and what they're doing, how they're posturing themselves before they do the bang. And if you're left of bang, that means you catch them before they do evil. Every pastor should read this book. That's what pastors are supposed to be doing. And now Christians, dads, moms, husbands, wives, the Christian community in your town, in your city, in your place, we need to be just like this. It needs to be the Christian's version of the combat hunter program, meaning we are now looking for evil and we are ready because we live in evil times. And there's nothing depressing about that. In fact, I'll argue with you that it's invigorating. But if the United States Marine Corps that defends the United States and other nations are taught this discipline, how much more we who deal with eternal things? Very important. The next quote is from Sun Tzu, and that is The Art of War. You can, this is a very small book. It's extremely ancient, but it's awesome. And that is, Vic, victorious warriors win first. They win first. Before I read any further, doesn't the Bible says the battle belongs to the Lord? Doesn't the Bible tell us that God has already predetermined the outcome of the war that you and I are involved in? Well, Sin Tzu says, victorious warriors win and then go to war. Think of that for a moment. Jesus said that. Jesus said nobody goes to battle unless they first figure out that they can win the war. While defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. What a tremendous attitude. Christian, I want to encourage you this year. According to the Bible, you and I are going to go to war and the Lord is our commander-in-chief. He's the captain of the Lord's host, the Bible says, and that the outcome has already been determined by whatever you and I come up against this year. In whatever scenario. From this moment on, I want all of you, and I told you, I I don't remember what message it was. It seems like it's all a big blur right now, but it was either New Year's Eve or, or, uh, or I don't know what it was, but I had challenged you that this year of 2024, I was going to throw off any restraint and just absolutely prepare you for the days that are coming, even if this church dwindles down to 10 people. I just want them to be the, the healthiest spiritual 10 people ever. I'm not, I don't care anymore about, about growing a big church. I've never cared. By the way, know this. Big church, big problems. Okay? But to God be the glory. Big church, big opportunity to do big things. But having said that, I've lived through that already. And I'm here to tell you right now. As we go into the war of 2024, I am 100% committed to mine and to your spiritual development and nothing else. Whatever it takes to get you and I stronger in Jesus is what we're going to be doing. And many of you, listen, I'm not a prophet, but many of you will not be able to put up with this year. And this is by design. If you say, that's it, I've had enough. I want you to know you are part of the fruit of the plan. If you say, I don't want to be that serious about Jesus, there's the door. You know why? We're we're on our way to heaven, and we want to bring as many men and women and boys and girls with us, and this world is not our home, and if you think it is your home, you're in the wrong place. Because listen, we are on a mission, and we are in a war, and this year of 2024 will be unlike any other year previously lived in your lifetime. A little bit of Housekeeping for a moment. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21. I told you it's our theme verse. Look at the word test. Test all things, hold fast what is good. The word test means to approve of by holding up to the light. You ever do that? Maybe you're looking at something. Have you noticed when you hand somebody a $100 bill, if you have a $100 bill that you have not sent to the government in your taxes now, if you happen to have one, and have you noticed the, the retailer Or the storekeeper will hold it up to see if it's for real. What are they looking at? They're looking at it and through it. The Bible says, hold it up to the light this year. Hold it up to the light. To examine in the light. To confirm the authenticity of something by exposure to scrutiny. That's a good thing. Judge it. 
Hold it up to the light. And then the words combined, uh, combined, it's one Greek word, but it's all things. The Greek word is P-A-S, pas. And it means this, as in all kinds. Watch this. So test, put to the scrutiny, hold up to the light of exposure. All kinds, all men, all respects, all angles, all possibilities, all situations. Example given, the etymology of the word sincere, meaning without wax. Did you know when you sign your name sincerely uh, Judy or sincerely Lisa or sincerely Jack, do you know what you're saying? You may not be aware of this. You're saying, this has been written to you and I have said these things to you without any wax. And you put your name. You say, what in the world does that mean? In the ancient days, people would buy idols and little gods to worship. And sometimes if you were selling gods uh, and idols and one of the gods fell off the cart and broke its head, you would put it back on and you would heat it up with wax. You would glue it back together and then you would paint over it and sand it and all that stuff. And you would sell it. It's faulty, but nobody knows it. So the the worshiper buys the the statue of of Zeus and on the way home if that statue's head is hanging out of his little shopping bag and the sun heats up the wax the head falls off it means that it was insincere when something's insincere you take it back and you go for the original when you say this is true you say sincere it means I've spoken this without hypocrisy without any wax put it to the heat put it to the test I mean it. That's what he's saying. Test all things. Examine all things. See if it's real. And then he says, uh, hold fast. Hold fast. The word means to hold firmly. Listen, to grip. It means to bind yourself to or to it. To possess, to restrain by never letting go. We would use the term death grip. I'm not sure if you're familiar with a death grip. It's, it's an actual, it's not only a term, but it actually happens. Um, I had a friend of mine whose father was dying, and he was holding her arm, and he died holding her arm, and uh, her arm was bruised for over a week from the grip of his uh, passing. He was holding on so strong. And that's the term death grip, according to the Bible. We are to have a death grip on the word of God, on the promises of God this year. Determining, I'm going to take a death grip on the Bible. I'm not going to let go. And then the word good, kalo or kalos, is the Greek word. It means beautiful. The better thing, the best, what is excellent, that which is of the highest value or character. The wise choice. To choose the best of the best. The wise choice is to uh, do what's the, the elevating or the, 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 high, the high bar choice. So let me read it to you in, in, a, uh, in, in an amplified way. First Thessalonians 5.21. Hold up to the light every single thing that comes into your life. And take a grip that you will never let go of regarding all or anything that is good. That's what we're going to do in 2024 as we go into this war. Number one, mark it down. Don't worry, everybody. There's something like 15 or 16 of these. This is number one, but we'll only get through a few of them today. We'll save, save the rest for next week. I promise not to abuse you. The war of 2024, number one is and will be against the truth. That's a no-brainer, but please write it down. I want all of you to write this down. Put it in your journal. Uh, take, take photos, whatever it, whatever it takes. Just remember this, because to be armed, to be knowledgeable, is to be practicing what the world is very proficient at, and that is left of bang, or the art of war, is to know what's coming up ahead so that you know what to do. The war in this 2024 year will be against the truth. No doubt about it. Jesus said in John 18, 37, Pilate therefore said to him, Jesus, are you king then? Remember, Jesus was on trial. And Jesus answered and said, you say rightly that I'm a king for this cause I was born. And for this cause I have come into the world. That I should bear witness to the truth. 
Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. And Pilate said to him, what is truth? You can hear that in his voice. Pilate could have said, really, so you're that big of a deal, Jesus? Um, I don't hear your voice. I mean, I hear your mouth moving, but I don't understand a word you say, Jesus. He didn't say that, did he? He didn't say, what, are you calling me deaf, Jesus? Is that it? He didn't say that either. He could have. Pilate said, what's truth? And if you think about that for a moment, think about the pain behind that question. Think about the confusion behind the question. Think about the disillusionment behind the question in life. Have you come to that place in life, and maybe you have, and now, listen, life has been in such a state for you that you, you've got your arms folded, the wall is built up 10 feet high in front of your heart, and you say things like, what is truth? What is true these days? Now, we've got to all watch out, everybody. In the midst of argument number one, we've got to guard our hearts that we do not become cynical and bitter because it's going to be really, really easy to do because we don't know who's telling us the truth or who's, who's lying. We don't know nothing anymore. Misinformation is everywhere. We'll talk more about this in a moment, but the war is against the truth. And even Pilate, it's always been the case, but even Pilate says, what is it? A lot of people today are saying, what is it? What is truth? And then when you tell them truth, I think we're further beyond Pilate's day in, the, in Rome 2,000 years ago. When you tell somebody the actual truth, they don't believe it. And it's not that they're being mean about it. It's that, why should I believe that? Because I've just heard 10 other things. That's the world we live in today. We're at war. And it's all going to heat up. This is the perfect storm. I don't mean to be funny. In fact, I'm going to say some things today that you might be tempted to either laugh or get angry at. And I don't mean any of that to happen to you. So I'm just telling you right now in advance. We are entering a year of war in various parts of the world. Did you see Kim Jong-un a few days ago? What did he do? He launched rockets into South Korea. Do we not know this in America? I don't watch American news. I watch all... all did you know that? Anybody know that? You did? Do you know that? That guy's stirring it up, man. You want to know why? Because he can. China's stirring it up. Turkey's stirring it up. Nations are stirring it up. What's going on? Somebody will say something. Somebody will claim this. Somebody will claim the other. Dear friends, it's just absolutely gotten to the point where there's a war on truth to the point where you better stick to knowing and reading the truth and don't, don't journey out into no man's land where you can't prove what it is you're reading. Well, I read the Wall Street Journal. Stop! <laughs> well, I watch this. I have to be careful now because some of the, some of the uh, networks... Uh, of TV carry us on Sunday morning, so I don't want to say everybody. <laughs> hey, if they're crazy enough to put us on, we'll go on. But uh, some of the, I'm telling you, you don't know. And then they show the video clip, and it's AI doctored up. You don't know. Remarkable stuff. Well, you know, I read, mm, first warning, Say, Jack, man, what are you doing then? You're telling me I, I, I can't, are you telling me that I can just trust the Bible? Well, I know this, a whole lot of people for thousands of years have gone on ahead of us to try to blow the Bible up, and they haven't been able to find one boo-boo in it yet. Amen. So that's not a bad place to start, Amen. is the word of God. But I want to give you this, uh, I would just want to read this to you publicly, and it's this. Jesus Christ is the embodiment of the truth and all that is true. All truth belongs to God, and there is no other truth on the market. Should anyone say, this is my truth, or, well, that's just your truth, they have denied the fundamental reality of what truth is. It is an absolute attribute of God, not us, God. And without God, it is a falsehood, a counterfeit reality. It's to pretend. Well, this is my truth. Are we not hearing this today? 
Oh, that's my, this is your truth. Isn't that the gospel of Oprah Winfrey? That's her gospel. That's your truth. But I have a different truth. This is very popular today among humanists. And maybe you're somebody here today, or maybe you're watching right now, and you have fallen into that deception where you use that very terminology, well, I just follow my truth. You have been deceived and quite possibly beyond hope. May God have mercy on you. Because that is to say, I'm in charge, I know what's right, I know what's true, and even though my position differs with that of God in the Bible, I'm going to go with my way. And do you know what you're announcing? You're announcing what Eve was pursuing in the garden. I want to be like God. And where did she get that from? From Satan himself, who said in Isaiah chapter 14 and Ezekiel 28 in the Old Testament, I want to be like God. Anybody who comes along and says, you want to be a God? You need to slam the door at him. So what, what can be done about it, you might ask? This is what you can do about it. This is the application. Are you ready? Are you guys okay? Yes. So this is the application to number one. So okay, truth is going to be attacked in 2024. What do I do about it? So what? Well, here it is. It's 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20 and 21. In fact, I'm going to read it to you in two different versions. First is the King James, because it is awesome. Watch this. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings. Oh, that just sounds sarcastic. I just love the way that sounds. You're nothing but a profane and vain babbler, you are. And oppositions of science, falsely so-called. Wow. Which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Here it is in the exact pendulum swing opposite is the New Living Translation. Oh, Timothy, guard what God has entrusted to you. Avoid godless, foolish discussion, discussions with those who oppose you with their so-called knowledge. It's good stuff, huh? Verse 21. Some people have wandered from the faith by following such foolishness. Do we not know people that have fallen victim to this war? Wow. Number two, everybody, mark it down. The war of 2024 is this. It's against the facts. You say, isn't the truth and the facts two different things? Not necessarily. They incorporate one another. First of all, uh, truth is unwavering and eternal, and it's an attribute of God. Facts is the reporting of what is observed, heard, seen, experienced. It's the reporting of what happened. Listen, the facts to a situation simply means this, that you're telling the truth, and you might be telling the truth regarding something that is very bad. Are you hearing me? I saw him shoot her. That is a very, very tragic thing, and, it's, and murder is against the truth, but the fact is he saw her, you see, as a witness. We need to understand that. Okay, now uh, here's where you're going to, I'm going to tell you right now, I love you. I just love you so much that I want you to know the truth. And I've already rehearsed this in my head, and I just thought, yeah, ushers, I usually say ushers lock the doors. Ushers can, can open the doors for this one, you know? People are going to want to run. So when we talk about facts, there are, are terms and there are words like facts, data, information. Here's a whopper. Misinformation, research, experts. And I quote now, fact-checking. This is, listen, fact-checking, fact-checkers, a data-driven approach. In a 22-page research article published by the Harvard, okay, well, that's, we've read enough. <laughs> now it's a comedy skit here. The Harvard Kennedy School, seriously? Misinformation review? <laughs> That's what they have time to do now? Okay. Examined practices of U.S. fact-checking organizations, Snopes. Is that how you say it? I, don't, I won't even go to their website. How do you say it? You don't even know. Some said Snoops. Some said Snopes. 
Let's call them dopes. <laughs> the dopes and PolitiFact, Logical, or Logic, yeah, Logical, never heard of them, and Associated Press, those guys we've heard of. A near unanimous agreement of dopes and PolitiFact is what researchers found. Stop right there, everybody. Do you know how to unpack these things? When, we, when we're, as a Christian, when we're reading anything, I don't care if it's a cookbook, who's, who's, who's reading the, who is this? I, I, can't, I can't go any further. You want to know why I can't go any further? Who are the researchers who came to this conclusion? Who are they? I don't know who they are. What worldview do they have? Who do they work for? Who signs their check? What's, per, what's their personal agenda on things? I don't know. You don't know. Watch this. What research has found likely means, oh boy, likely means that fact-checking is complex and multifaceted. I feel I, I can hear an excuse coming. Involving numerous variables. You know what that means? It means nobody knows nothing about it. <laughs> and that fact-checkers select and verify claims. Wait, select? Radar on full alert. <laughs> Who's doing the selection? Fact checkers. Who are these people? You'll never know. They select and verify claims in their own unique ways. <laughs> when multiple fact checking organizations consistently agree, <gasps> a group consensus, mob rule. When they consistently agree on the accuracy of a statement, the public is more likely to trust their assessments, the researchers concluded. Interesting, interesting. Translation. If we can all in this business sound like we have corroborated and come to the same conclusion, no matter what the real data is, because we have an agenda, because we're all paid by George Soros, <laughs> then what's cool about it is, the, the, poor, the poor person on the other end reading, there, there's going to be a high probability they're going to believe us. <laughs> because there seems to be some consistency. You got to peel back, everybody. You got to peel back the banana all the way to see what's going on. You got to be careful. Another comment. Wherever and whenever power, money, fame... Control or self-advancement is present or possible. There you will find a personal agenda and or a collective agenda at work to succeed. Is that not a true statement? Yes. Do you understand that the only way that life really works right is a life that operates under the fear of God? Because the Bible says, by the way, when you make a deal with somebody and you shake hands on it and you say this is a deal, the Bible says if something goes wrong, you should keep your deal even if it winds up hurting you. The Bible says don't break your word. Don't break the handshake. What I just said to some of you could have been in, in Swahili and you never would have understood a word I just said. That's just like, what? What was that? Yep. Can you imagine? In, 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 this, in this era that we live in, Applying God's principles, if you shake on it or you say, I'll be there or I'll do it, and then you find out that you can get it a little bit more from this guy over here. You've already told that person you would do it. According to God, he holds you accountable. Keep your word. Yeah, but I'm going to make another extra thousand if I break the deal and make it with this guy. God says, keep your word. The moment that you change like that, your word can be bought and you have zip integrity. Everybody may see you one way, but you look at yourself in the mirror and you know. And God knows. The Christian should be the most steadfast, the most predictable employee, business owner, manager, whatever it might be. Husband, wife. I've given you my word. Till death do us part. And God heard that. So make it work. Simple as that. Make it, make it work. So I want to read this. Here it is. Here it is. So words matter, and their definitions matter. People, for 2024, definitions are going to be a big deal. 
It's not so much the words. Remember, I mean, words do matter. But what we've got, listen, things have gotten so cuckoo that now it's not even the words you use. It's what do you mean by that? It's definitions now. Five years ago, it was words. Because we all kind of use the same dictionary. Now it's like, what does that mean? I love you. What does that mean? Isn't that something? I agree. What does that mean? We've got to ask for a definition. So here it comes. Here's the test. Here's the part that I told you is going to test you. Remember, I love you. <laughs> Don't say anything, please. Be, be silent. Ponder it. Who is God? That's going to be asked a lot in 2024. Who is God? Next, what is a gender? See, th listen, this is dangerous stuff. And everything I'm going to bring up to you has to do with Scripture. What is your worldview? What, in other words, what value system operates your life? What does the truth, or what does the word truth mean to you? Mm -hmm.